Hey everyone, so August is always an interesting month for me because it's the month where everything is ready to harvest, everything's kind of at its peak. So at the beginning of August, I'm very focused and very in love with my current year garden. But somehow, near the end of the month, I completely switch gears and start planning for 2023. So that's what I thought I would share in this video is some of my plans for the garden next year. Now a lot of stuff is going to be very similar and I think there's gonna be some really cool differences for next year's garden as well. So I will take you around, I will show you kind of what I think is gonna stay about the same, some of the changes that I'm gonna make. I also think it'll be interesting because obviously it's, let's see, nine months away from when we're actually going to be planting out our warm weather crops next year so we'll see how much of my plan stays as it currently is but i do think i'll pretty much stick to what i'm wanting to do right now so before i kind of take you around and show you what i'm going to change the biggest change is going to be the back deck is basically gonna become a garden. Now, I'd said in a recent video this year when I was starting to move some containers to the back that I wanted to keep it as a non-garden area because one, we have like the seating area there. Um, again, I'm not the only one that lives here, so I don't wanna take over all of the outdoor space, but I just, once you get started putting plants in a new area, it kind of just takes over. So I'll go more into detail once I get out there and kind of show you what the back area looks like. But essentially, there is going to be a garden, although not as intense as up here on the back deck. Um, and if you don't know kind of the layout of our decks, the one that I'm on right now, which is the main garden, is west facing. So it gets a lot of the afternoon sun. It's 18 by 19 square feet. The back deck gets the morning sun. It's east facing, east facing, and it's the same size, but some of the space is taken up by like mechanical stuff, so like air conditioner unit and stuff like that. Um, so even though it's the same size balcony, some of the area is already taken up by other stuff. So that's why I decided to have my garden out here in the first place. So now we will start going around up here. Um, I will show you again, kind of what's staying the same, some of the things I'm gonna change, and then we will head out to the back deck. I'm currently standing on a chair, which is definitely not meant to be stood upon, um, but I wanted to be able to kind of give you a sweep of the garden, kind of the more structural elements where they're placed, and it's just much easier to do up here. Um, so if you kind of look through the plants, I have a raised bed here. There is a raised bed in the corner back there. I have three large 30 gallon grow bags here. We have the center raised bed and then a, another raised bed behind it along that wall. The herb rack is here. And then over here is the flower cart. Now for the front garden here, my plan is to leave all of those things in place. Um, one, because the raised beds are too heavy to move, now that they're filled with soil, but two, I really like the setup and the positioning. So my garden, I can walk around it in basically a circular path, well, more of a square path around everything, get to everything, it's really accessible. Um, the flower cart as well, I'm planning to leave in the exact same position, two reasons. One, I like it there, and two, it's the only space for it. Um, it is gonna come inside with me for the winter, which I don't know exactly, where I'm going to put it, but I think it will be nice to have it inside. It's just like a nicer piece as well, so I don't want to leave it outside in the winter, whereas the raised beds, again, they're staying out here permanently. Um, so now we'll start with the flower cart and I'll kind of show you some of the changes I'm making for next year. So this turned out exactly how I'd imagined, if not even better with the morning glory on top of the roof of the flower cart. Saying that, however, though, I've realized that everything in the flower cart really could benefit from being either part shade or just keeping the full sun plants near the front here because if you come in here you can see the front of the plants are full of flowers um, the back is a lot more green and flowerless and then i have this hanging basket that i was using as a, as a chandelier that i pulled the super bells from because they weren't getting any sun so i will definitely if i'm doing this again next year, which I think I will. I definitely need a shade plant in here um, and then more shade plants kind of along the back. So I'm thinking I might put a plastic window box that I grew some morning glory in here. So it's closer to the front. I had the plants trailing over 
shade plants in the back. But overall, I really loved how this has turned out. Now, one change I have to make coming over here is the size of the pot. Move the garbage can out of the way. But essentially, I put two Morning Glory in here. This was originally gonna be grown inside. And this pot is not large enough for two Morning Glory. I'm gonna keep two just because again, I like the thickness of the roof. However, this one dries out so quickly because there's so many roots in here. One of the plants has definitely done better than the other. So I just need a larger container, but I'm planning to do the exact same thing here with two Morning Glories growing up this cart. I'm actually going to get a specific pot that I already have to use here that I'll show you in just a second. But other than that, this is pretty much going to remain almost as it is going into next year. I will be moving the ferns, hydrangeas, anything else that's more shade loving out of this garden. So I think the ferns I might just keep inside. I mentioned that in a different video or I will take them out next year to the east facing garden with the not as intense morning sun. Same thing with all the hydrangeas. As much as I love the idea of a wall here of hydrangeas, they just do not do well in the heat that we've been having. So this wall over here, I actually don't know what I'm going to do with it. So I need to figure out a plant that can handle the sun and the heat and maybe can get even taller up here. So this is where we get the most shade. The majority of the pot will be in the shade. So I'll need something that can still grow without getting direct sun and get tall enough so that it starts to reach the sun. So maybe even a climbing plant and some trellises. Not sure, but I need to figure out what is gonna go along that wall. Then coming around to this bed, this has been my gumfrina bed for two years in a row now. So last year was the first year I grew any gumfrina. I became obsessed. I put all the gumfrina in it again this year, and I'm going to continue doing that next year as well. The only change I'm making here is I'm going to plant the gumfrina even closer. So I think in this raised bed, I followed the spacing suggestions, which I think is about like six to eight inches. Um, but I planted them like two inches apart in two pots that I'll show you in just a second. And I like the look of them closer together much better. And they seem to be performing fine. I'm starting to realize that recommended spacing, even if I cut it in like half, I can still grow things successfully in the garden. So this is what the gomfrina kind of look. Oh, did I get that on? So as I was zooming in on the bee on the gumfrina, I came face to face with a hummingbird. It was like six inches from my face. I just went back to look at the video to see if it was in there and it's not. I'm so sad. I wish I'd gotten that on video. I think this is the second time I've seen a hummingbird in my garden. Oh, man, it was so exciting to see though. So I am still glad that it was there. I just wish I'd gotten it on video. So anyway, let's continue. So I'm over on the other side right now just to show you the gomfrina. So there are two 12 inch pots here. I think there are three gomfrinas in each of the pots. Um, again, about two to three inches apart. And I just really love the overflowing look and they're producing like crazy. So I'm just going to fill that raised bed even more um, with gomfrina for next year. And definitely having more of these larger pots as well with gomfrina around it just because I absolutely love this look. Another difference I need to figure out for next year is my herb rack area. Now, I like where it's located, but I need something different than the sh shelf setup, and I'll show you why. So it is kind of three steps, but the steps don't really go out far enough. So I have to move the pots really far forward, and even then, like some of the bushier ones like this time, you can see the back where it's like growing like this instead of bushing out completely. So I want to get something that is like instead of like this, like maybe even larger steps coming out. So I will be on the lookout for something like that and then just use this in a different space in the garden. I've really loved these little plant stands though where I have two herbs on each. Coming along this pathway, uh, the 30 gallon grow bags are all staying here. It'll be tomatoes and zinnias just kind of flip flopped around. So no major change there. 
But this is the pot that I've fallen in love with and I think I'm gonna grow the morning glory in here, but also I think I'm going to shift my dahlias from grow bags, which you can kind of see right there, I'll show you on the other side a little bit better, to uh, these pots. So I grew my dahlias in grow bags starting last year and they've worked really well because the reason I killed dahlias in the past was because I think I was over watering them. Um, so obviously the grow bags have really great drainage because it drains out of all parts of the grow bag. So that helped a lot keep them alive. They've been happy and the grow bags are really cheap. I think it's like $5 per bag when you divide out the total cost by the number of bags in a package. So again, I'm kind of nervous to switch because it's worked so well. Maybe I'll try both, um, we'll see. But I like the look of the pot I just showed you. So while I do love grow bags, I don't necessarily love the look as much. And if it's gonna be something that's kind of a more permanent like feature along the back wall, I think the pots will look a little bit nicer. Now they are roughly the same size, if not larger than the grow bags. And I don't know, I'll try to remember the link because I forgot the name of the brand down below. I don't know why these pots are so cheap at Home Depot, but they are. I think it's like $8 for that pot that I just showed you with the zinnias in it, which is only a few dollars more than the grow bags. And it's terracotta, so it's still pretty good drainage wise. So I think, maybe not all of my dahlias, just in case something happens, but I think I'm gonna try switching a few of them over next year. Again, just because it looks a little prettier. You can see the grow bags better here. Don't mind the uh, pot that I'm using as support systems, um, but you can see here they just get dirty really easily, which again doesn't bother me too, too much, I feel like if I'm just throwing a vegetable in it, but if it's something kind of sitting along the wall with the dahlias in it, I just think I wanna try something that looks a little bit prettier. Um, also, what I'm gonna do differently is have taller supports. I think the supports I put in here were maybe this tall, and as soon as the dahlias got well, as large as they are, they just started falling over. So definitely going to do a much better job staking next year. Now there is another raised bed right here, which you can see a little bit of, but I really like when there's so much plant activity that you can't really see the raised bed. Um, but in it right now is straw flowers and some petunias. And I do really love straw flowers. I'm gonna grow them again next year. I just don't really love them in this raised bed. And last year in this raised bed, I think I grew a melon plant and some random flowers. Didn't love the look of it either. Um, so I think I'm gonna grow straw flowers in a pot on the ground. And then my plan for this, I'm really excited, is I wanna get more native plants in my garden for the pollinators, butterflies specifically, but all pollinators are welcome. But I basically just got, I think it's called like the Midwest Illinois native seed collection uh, that I just ordered online. So I think I'm gonna do the whole bed. I mean, I still have the petunias because I like them trailing down, but then I will just have native plants growing in the rest of that raised bed. Now, besides the native seed mix, I also have separate milkweed seeds and I got them, I'll try to link it down below. Um, but if you're in, I think you have to be in the city of Chicago, um, you can fill out the form and it's one of the water organizations of Chicago working with another organization who protects monarchs in Illinois. And because they're on the endangered species list now, they're sending out seeds to anyone who just like fills out a form and says, yes, I'm going to help save the monarch. So I just got those in the mail. Um, I'm gonna grow those in separate pots, I think on the back deck, because I want to have a little butterfly area back there. So I'll talk more about that when we get over there. But I just wanna have more native plants in my garden. And since I really haven't found something I love for that raised bed, I thought that would be the perfect option for next year. So we'll see how that goes. I'm really excited for that because I like the look too of just kind of throwing a mix of seeds and everything coming up at once. So it'll be like my little meadow raised bed. Now this raised bed here behind the gumfrena is the shortest of my raised beds. I think it is 18 inches or two feet tall. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's the lowest one to the ground. So it works really well for tall flowers to still give them protection from the wind because we have the wall here um, versus the taller ones where you can see how much taller these straw flowers are in there. I don't know what I'm gonna plant in here yet, um, but I wanted to show off this bed because this is the bed I think I'm going to get more of for the back deck. And I think those are all of the changes that I'm kind of making up here that I know of for sure going into next year. So structurally, 
a lot of the same up here um, just some kind of tweaks with what I'm growing and how I'm growing it but the back deck is what I'm really excited for well I'm excited for all of it but I'm excited because I think that's the one that's going to change the most from this year to next year so now let's go ahead and we'll head right back there we are on the back deck now and one of the things I love about the back deck is just the view of that church. We don't go to that church but it's pretty to see out of the deck here. Um, so yeah kind of a look around to see how it's currently set up. We have the seating area here. Plants just kind of randomly strewn about. Back there is where the air conditioning unit is. Um, so it's basically a blank canvas but I think what I'm gonna do is along this back wall here I've measured it out and I can fit four of those raised beds um, and still have a little space between them so I think I'm gonna have raised beds all along this back wall this garden will be more flower focused a bit more I don't want to say like formal or structured um, but it's going to be the flowers kind of accenting the seating area versus just kind of a garden shoved with all of the plants like the front one is although I'm sure this one will end up about the same um, but my plan is for all the four raised beds to kind of plant either all four of them with the exact same plants or like two in the middle with the same and two on the end with the same but I want to put um, a lot of things that I can cut here as well so like zinnias things that I can cut and it'll grow a lot more so zinnias asters gomfrina I think I'm also going to add some more strawberry plants here because I really love strawberry. I have two right now and I can use a lot more, but have them trailing over. So that is my plan for all along this back wall here. Now, if we swing over here, this right now is being used as a storage area and I'm still gonna need a storage area somewhere. Um, but I think this area will work nicely for a couple things. One, I think the hydrangeas will work really well back here because this is where the sun rises in the east hits here first and then it starts to get the shade as we head into the afternoon so all of my hydrangeas i'm going to put them along here and see how they do and hopefully they do well so i can keep them in the garden but this is also where i want to grow milkweed in pots on this garden and have one of those not too large but like maybe a medium-sized uh netted butterfly sanctuary little area i had a good amount of caterpillars in the garden this year that were going to become butterflies but we also had a ton of wasps which i definitely seemed like we had more wasps than normal this year and they ate every single caterpillar i even tried to put one of those um like protective nettings for blueberries from birds on top of it and they still somehow got it so i'm gonna get an actual made to protect the butterfly little sanctuary cages um, I think what I'll do is I will grow the milkweed in pots out here once I start to get uh, the eggs or see the eggs or the little caterpillars I will move them then into the cage and hopefully I can grow some butterflies so we tend to get well monarchs we haven't seen as many this year unfortunately um, and then other than monarchs what is the other type of butterfly that we get swallowtail that is the other butterfly I get on the dill. So I'll have some dill milkweed that I'm growing just specifically for butterflies and then hopefully grow butterflies out here and release them. So I'm really, really excited and looking forward to that. Um, I think those are all kind of the major plans that I have right now. So yeah, more native plants, a little butterfly area, and then just expanding the garden back here as well. And then assuming I have the four raised beds, I don't plan to have a bunch of small pots back here. Again though, it's hard for me to get rid of plants so I will still probably end up that way. But I kind of want to move away from as many small containers as I have right now because it is just harder to keep everything watered. They dry out a lot faster. I need many more like setups on my irrigation or I just don't have them set to irrigation at all which isn't a huge deal unless we are out of town. So yeah, we'll see how that goes with actually having fewer smaller containers and more larger containers, we will see. Now for my raised beds, I get those from Gronomics, so I'm planning to order them online. They usually have sales. I think they should have a Labor Day sale. I think they also have one during the winter, um, but because I'm buying four, I think I calculated about $800 for four of the beds, which seems like a lot to spend at once, but 
for the beds themselves and the space. I don't think it's as expensive as other options are. So I'm gonna wait till there's a sale. I don't know if I'll buy all four at once. I might buy two and then two again a few months later so that I can have them ready for next spring. But if I get them even this fall, I'm not gonna set them up because I want to have all four of them inside during the winter in their boxes. I'll set them up next spring and then that way they all kind of weather at the same time. So yeah, I think that is everything now for my 2023 garden plans. We will see how close I get to what I'm planning right now in August of 2022 for the next year. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. If you already know what you're gonna do differently in your garden next year, leave it in the comments below. Or if you have any ideas for what I should do in my garden next year, let me know as well. Um, but other than that, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.